so what we're looking at is a few things. How do we, what do we look for before you move on from this lift, right? Is what we talked about. And then down here, I gave them kind of a, a movement based uh, teaching approach, which focuses more on having fun and doing, doing some pretty interesting uh, maneuvers and things like that to get, to, to get comfortable on the board. And then um, progressing up the hill so that we can change the, the shape of the first hour um, of the lesson. In any event, uh, let's get into it. So I'll show, you, I'll show you sort of my theory on this. And I think most first time experiences, right? You walk out, you meet your instructor, you know, maybe ask some, a couple informal questions like, hey, what brought you here today? Or what do you want to learn today? Things like that. And what doesn't really happen is you don't get into that process of really like bonding through learning until after you're out in the, out in the battlefield. You know what I mean? So in here, it's a little, it's not that great, right? There's not good energy. So a couple of things. The other, the other piece is you'd probably go from that to maybe talking about stance and then you'd put one foot in, you'd skate around, you'd do those things. And so I, I kind of take a different approach to it and I like to share it with people. And when you have the right terrain, it's very easy to do. So like if this were level right here, doing what we're about to do would be very easy, right? If we had our, our little mini pipe bowled out area at the top, then all the stuff that you know we did at the top in the earlier session would be very simple. We then have a couple of those bank turns and those things to work with that actually control speed and work for you. Then you have a really nice flow. The first hour of the lesson goes from a lot of hard work with no real success out on the mountain to a whole bunch of fun, playful things, gaining awareness and balance and feeling like a snowboarder with two feet, two feet in instead of skating right away. And then going up there and experiencing some, you know, some basic maneuvers, getting a sense for stopping, turning, traversing, and then actually riding some bank turns and an hour into the lesson, they've had quite an experience. You know, it's a different approach. So let's look at it. Um, go ahead and spread out a little bit and buckle and in. You probably remember this, but it starts with it kind of the framework is the four ranges of motion, right? Because if we get through all four ranges of motion, then we find stance. And so ranges of motion came out of the freestyle manual years ago, and they're very simple, right? First, we start with just a little flexion extension. So we'll start with the simple stuff. Just get a little, get as low as you can, and get as tall as you can. The nice thing about going through ranges of motion in the flats is people get warmed up. So just kind of, I do this a couple of times and get them to feel that, and then we find the middle, right? So now we're in the middle of our flexion extension range, you know, hips, knees, and ankles. And when, we're, when I'm standing here, I always talk to them about feeling pressure in the tongues of their boots so they, they know their ankles are bent. A lot of pressure will start to move you over your toes, but a little pressure is a good place to be. No pressure at all, or pressure in the backs of your boots, probably not in a very athletic position. But right here, we got ankles and knees bent, we're in a good stance. Right From there, we play around a little bit with the flexion extension. So stand up tall and drop super fast. So fast, your board comes off the ground, but don't jump up, right? There's no jump, there's just drop. There you go. Now let's, let's take it a different direction. Let's get down low. We're gonna jump up, pull our knees up, and stab them back down. And if you listen, it's pretty quiet if you do this right. So you gotta pull your knees up and then push them back down real fast. Pull them up to your chest. There you go. Now while you're doing that, it's Scott, right? Yeah. Keep your head up. Keep your upper body upright. There you go. If it's real loud, that's a lot of impact. So. All we're trying to do though is just get the students to play a little bit with moving their feet to and from their core, right? And you're warming up muscles and you're making them be athletic and kind of get into something. Um, from there, I don't do a ton with flexion extension because it's very simple. We, get, we create the connection of contact, shin to tongue contact. We show them that this is the middle. This is probably a good place to start because they can move up or down, right? And then from there, we move into the next range, which blends really nicely with flexion extension. We start going foot to foot. So, just rock over your right foot. And as you do this, look at your joysticks. Your joysticks are your lower legs. So for the, from your knees down, both of my joysticks are tipping towards the tail, right? So now we'll go the other way. Get both joysticks to tip towards the nose, right? And kind of get a feel for that. This is a slow move, but we, can, we have a lot of leverage moving slow. We want to get them into a place eventually where they're making faster moves. So if we get a little low and we slide the board, and hold it and then pull it back and then slide it out and pull it back. Now they're moving when the board try to press. The body, a lot of them right? go like this to press. They raise their shoulder and they tip their spine. What we want to do as we slide it out is we want to 
tip our spine the opposite direction and then sink down over the, over the end of the board and we'll create a better press. A press that we can actually sustain, right? Try it on both sides, so slide it out and then sink now, down. Now let's play, let's play around. We, we had that flexion extension stuff, that quick drop we just did. We're gonna drop real quick and slide our board over at the same time. So I'm just gonna drop onto my back foot. Hear that little slap? And then pop and bring it back. Now I'll drop onto my front foot. Hear that little tiny slap? And it's not a jump, it's just like a little drop, right? Now let's, let's play with something else. Let's get the board sliding back and forth like this. And now let's put a hop in the middle. Little tiny. Keep it small for your students, right? Don't do it big. That's gonna lead into a soldier walk or a boardwalk in, in just a minute. Once we get to the toe to heel range. We're gonna keep exploring though this foot to foot range. This is the most important range, I think. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to do an ollie, right? This is a very simple move. But we get low, we tip our lead joystick towards our nose slightly, we slide the board out in front of us, we extend the back leg, and we return the board to where we started, right? All while keeping the lead shoulder down, right? So as I extend the back leg, I don't wanna also pull through my spine and hip by lifting that shoulder. Let's keep it down, exactly, and eventually, I get to where I control it really well. And you'll notice that like, when you, when you do that, the nose will come down first. That's you creating a, an arc. So over time off a jump, you're trying to create a natural arc off a jump that matches the tranny, right? That's what Ollie should do for you. Now if you do, like David earlier, we were out riding, and a lot of times he'd hit a natural jump and he'd kind of lift up into his Ollie, and then he'd start rolling the windows down to try to get forward. It's a natural thing when you use your upper body to create leverage. I want you guys to do it like you're in a tunnel. So get down below your height, you know, whatever that is, and we're gonna stay down. You can't hit your head on the ceiling of the tunnel, but now you gotta ollie over a log in front of you. So we put it in our legs, all in our legs. Now you just hit your head on the ceiling, right? There you go, you gotta start retracting. Throw the board out and pull it back. That's it, now you're getting over right, that let's log. Let's take it another step. Tunnel. Now we're gonna learn how to do what's called a tail check, right? We're gonna slide the board out away from us, so get it out in front of, uh, this is my tail. Now I check my joysticks, they're tipped back towards the tail, both of them. I get my shoulder right, I start to extend my back leg. Whoa, come on baby, till it's dead straight. I bounce on it, and I return it. That's hard to do on your own. Now try it on your nose. You slide it out, check your joysticks, load the nose. It, they should not feel a pull, right? There should care. There shouldn't be a lift in this at all. You should just be extending one leg. So this leg, all I'm going to do is extend it. I'm just going to keep extending it until it does what it does. I don't feel any pull right here, just so you know. Take my hands, I'll show you. Let's do it together. So slide that board out, now start extending this leg. Keep doing it, that's it. Okay. Now you fell forward, right? You lost it, let's see if you can keep it. Slide it out, extend this leg. Hold, almost. Use me if you need to. Slide it out. Now don't, don't try to hop up into it, do okay. it slowly, do it slowly. Slide it out, and use me, just push on me if you need to. Almost, almost. Okay, can't you, get over there. Now how you get over there though is you push the board further that way. When you extend this leg back here, I'm you've got to extend, forward. your core's got to move away from the board, right? Yeah. Slide the board out. Now extend the core away. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Got it. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is take it an even another step further. So this one's, this is my favorite. I love teaching these. But I get low, and you guys just watch me the first time maybe. I slide that board out, I bend at the waist and put my hands where my tail was. Now I'm gonna use my back leg, and I'm gonna push the board out till it pops, then I'm gonna pull my toes down and stand myself back up. So now check it. Here's the fun part. If you got, you know, this is a very skeletal move, but it's, if you have injured shoulders or elbows or anything, be careful, or wrists. You can do this, you can do a one-handed version, it's exactly the same movement pattern, but instead of putting both hands here, I put one hand right off the toe side corner of my tail. That's where I'm gonna plant. So as I do this same exact move, just get low, slide it. As soon as it pops, pull it back in. Once you start feeling that snap, you can throw a hand plant on anything.
So now if you think about it, right, and this is something that's a nice piece of awareness, you guys are popping this board kind of to here on the flats. You're just kind of going to here. If we put that on, on vert, right, or some, some tranny, then that same move is inverted. Does that make sense, right? This is the same move though that initiates a wildcat backflip, same move that initiates a tame dog. We just do it through our nose, right? That movement, the ability to bend and drive and snap that board out from underneath us like that is what accelerates us into flip over the nose or tail. Kind of fair. Cork and corks are the same thing. They're just less of it, not quite as direct over the, you know, straight over the tail or a little bit more on an, a, on an off axis kind of angle at the takeoff um, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, we've explored foot to foot with the flexion extension, they go hand in hand. Those two are really connected, right? So we got, we have our flexion extension is this one, very simply, right? We did a little drop drills or little jump drills. We played around with it. Our foot to foot, we can rock over our board, which is slow, right? Or we can slide that board underneath our body, which is fast, right? Playing around with those two. We've got two more to go. We've got our toes and our, our toe and heel, heel range, so our toe to heel. And then we've got our, uh, ro our rotary range. These are simple. So toe to heel is kind of hard, especially if you're on any kind of pitch with beginners. They'll tend to fall a lot or slip and slide. So be careful, but you guys should be able to handle it right here. First, let's try stacking on our toes. This is where I teach stacking. So I have them get low, start squishing the tongues of their boots, tip their shoulders forward from the hips, and then extend the hips until it rocks up onto the toes a little bit. In an ideal world, they'd have to hop forward a little bit. So you warn them and let them know, hey, you might have to jump to, to keep your balance. So as I get in here, if I'm doing it right, a little bit of hip extension makes me have to hop, right? Or if I do just a little bit, I can just get a little bit. What I don't want my students to do is this, right? Because when they do that, it doesn't work. That's when they, they won't be able to hold, sustain that in any kind of a way. So sit back over the heels, lift the toes. You gotta hold the toes up when you do this and little tiny hops. Okay. If you just jump off your heels holding your toes up, you can do this forever. Yeah. There you go, see the difference? Yeah. Students that can do those two moves can utilize their edges very effectively out on the hill. It's a good little training tool. Now you can play with it a little bit, you can do some MJs. Like you would on a rail. Or some Latoyas. Oh my God. Right? <laughs> but all you're trying to do is kind of show them how they can use, utilize these movements. Now, here's a really cool spot to teach them a boardwalk because you've taught them the little hop. Everybody do this hop again. And you just taught them how to use their edges. So if we start just hopping and then tip towards our toe edge a little bit, they'll start to boardwalk. They don't have to rotate intentionally to boardwalk, they'll rotate passively to boardwalk. The important parts of the boardwalk are the bounce. They have to bounce from nose to tail and get it bouncing and then just tip it a little bit and it'll naturally walk for them. All right, so with rotation, last, last range, right? With rotation, we're gonna start out showing them they, they can turn different chunks of their body without affecting their board. So if I just have them squish their tongues, get pressure even. Because the second pressure changes in the tongues of the boots, that means they've probably rotated their hips, right? So go ahead and do that. Just like 
Rotate your hips, you'll feel one, one shin get pre pressured up, the other one releases. Now get that even, let's just turn our head. You can look right, you can look left without moving your shoulders or your hips. Now lock in your head maybe forward like this and just turn your shoulders but don't turn your hips. Your hips just turn, Scott. Keep the pressure even in your boots. See how far you can, look at how far I can turn my shoulders. There you go, without turning my hips. I can get some rotation there, that's important later on for spinning. Right now, from here, let's lock our shoulders in and let's turn just our hips and feel that pressure change without moving the shoulders. Because we can put them together where the shoulders and the hips move together or we can separate them, right? Now from there, I start playing around with like shifties and 180s and things like that. So this is where I usually teach like rotary sequencing. So it's like you have a student who goes, ah, 360 would be sweet later on. This is where you can kind of talk to them about the future. And it, as you can with all those other things we just did, like amplants and tail presses and whatnot. But first, we'll do some shifty. So we'll just jump up. We're gonna, we're gonna turn our shoulders a little bit, then when we jump, we'll rotate against it. So I go here, or I go here, and I create some counter rotation to create that shifty. So if I'm gonna go towards my toes, I turn my shoulders towards my toes, and when I jump, I, put, I turn my shoulders against that movement. Right, there you go. I am, but I use the shoulders to set it up, then I use the hips to power it through. Does that make sense? Now if I'm gonna spin, right, the next thing I'll do is I'll teach them how to create the lead follow relationship. So I'll turn my shoulders, and now every time I hop, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm never gonna let my hips catch my shoulders. So it teaches them to discipline the, the hip alignment and the shoulder alignment with shoulders in the lead the whole way through. And it shows that if my shoulders are here, my hips wanna follow, and every time I pop, I'm creating power towards my shoulders. The other way is here. So now I'm disciplining that upper and lower body connection there, upper spine, lower spine. From there, we can talk about sequencing a spin. So if we wanna do a 180, we can wind it up. We unwind it when our shoulders take the lead of our hips. We then pop and drive the hips into the spin. That's the timing we want. So we want the shoulders in the lead and still moving to create a rotation. So it's here, in the lead, still moving, I create rotation. In the lead, still moving. If my shoulders don't take the lead, I won't get a very good spin. If my shoulders are all the way it wound out, my hips are too, I won't get a very good pop. So to get the balance, shoulders just take the lead and I still have both legs to power into the spin. Does that make sense? So you play around with that. Okay, so we've gone through all four ranges. We, earlier today we learned how to do a little front board drill, which is really fun, like a front side board slide. So if my rail's in front of me, right? And we're gonna learn how to, how to create that 90 degree shifty. It's a fun way to put all the ranges together because you gotta use edges, you gotta use rotation, you gotta use flexion extension, you gotta use foot to foot for this drill. But the first thing we're gonna do is just practice sliding the board into a nose press. So I just drop into a nose press. And it can be small, it can be this big. You can drop into that nose press right there. Just a little bit though. Now when I do it this time, I'm gonna drop into the nose press and I'm gonna look back and create some counter. So I'm gonna go here because this is where I'd be looking in my front board. Does that make sense? When I release that, right, I wanna hop off the nose just a little bit and get a feel for that. Pretty soon we're gonna add the rotation into this too. Nice. Now, let's practice just the rotation. So we're gonna close our shoulders to so point our lead shoulder towards our toe side edge. Then when I jump, I'm gonna point my lead shoulder back where I was going. So kind of parallel to where my rail is, right? You guys got that? And then I'll snap it back. Now I add a couple last pieces here to make this all come together. I'm gonna use that nose press to land. So I land in a nose press just for this drill. So I close my shoulders, and when I pop, I push my board back, right? So it rotates, I land on my nose, I'm in this position, I snap it off my nose, back to where I started. The last piece we'll add is when you're in the, when you're in the sliding position, push your back heel down. So when I do this, 
my back heel is pushing down to the ground while I'm squishing the tongue of the front boot, sliding this. And this kind of simulates a front nose, right? But if we put that rail in the center of our board, we still want to feel like we're stable over our front foot a little bit.